Hey everyone, Angry Honey Badger here, and today we will be taking a look at a build and guide for Orianna. At the start of this video, we will discuss her abilities and what they do and what order you'll want to max those out in. I'll then go over her runes and masteries, followed by counters to look out for, along with champions she does well against and champions she synergizes well with. Finally, we'll look at items you'll want to consider purchasing while playing Orianna, and we'll look at her pros and cons too. Be sure to like and subscribe if you find this video helpful, but for now, let's dive in and look at the Lady of Clockwork and what makes her tick. Girl, I'm a badger. Let's start by taking a look at Orianna's abilities. First, we'll start with her passive, which is Clockwork Windup. Orianna's auto attacks deal additional magic damage. This damage increases the more Orianna attacks the same target. Next is her Q ability, Command Attack. We'll typically max this out first. Orianna commands her ball to fire towards a target location, dealing magic damage to targets along the way. Her ball remains at the target's location after it's cast. Maxing out your Q first will help you in lane, moving your ball around more often and also dealing significant damage to minions and your enemy. At level two, we'll typically put a point into our command protect if you're playing smart as the enemy will probably start to trade with you. We will max this out last. This is your E ability. Oriana commands her ball to attach to an allied champion, shielding them and dealing magic damage to any enemies it passes through on the way. Additionally, the ball grants additional armor and magic resist to the champion it's attached to. And at level three, we'll put a point into our W, which is our command dissonance. We will be maxing this out second. Oriana commands her ball to release a pulse of energy, dealing magic damage around it. This leaves a field behind that speeds up allies and slows down enemies. And finally, we have Oriana's ultimate, which is Command Shockwave. Oriana commands her ball to unleash a shockwave, dealing magic damage and launching nearby enemies towards the ball after a short delay. For her rune page, I recommend Magic Penetration Marks, Health Per Level Scaling Seals, Ability Power Per Level Scaling Glyphs, and then finally, Ability Power Quintessences. For her Masteries page, I would suggest running a 2109 page, with 21 in the Offensive Tree focusing on damage, and 9 in the Utility Tree to help with her utility. The first counter we'll look at is LeBlanc. LeBlanc can be considered a counter due to her ability to quickly evade Oriana's ball and damage source while delivering large amounts of burst damage herself. Next is Syndra. As long as Syndra takes advantage of her range, she can avoid the powerful Oriana auto attacks and out harass her with better consistent early damage output, thusly winning the early game and lane. Finally, another counter to look out for is Ari. Ari's charm effectively shuts down Oriana's combo, and her ability to follow up with her spirit rush can help her avoid the travel time of Oriana's cast delivery system. Other general rules to countering Oriana include hard crowd control and playing champions that outrange her ball's cast range. As her champions that Oriana does well against, let's start out with Rise. His shorter range can be taken advantage of by zoning with your ball, and if he chooses to engage, you can use empowered auto attacks to help trade effectively. Next is Katarina. While your trading can be somewhat equal, you can zone with your ball while she attempts to CS. And once she hits level six and tries to solo you in a 1v1, you can shield yourself and ult yourself when she's on top of you to break her ultimate's channel. Finally, we have Twisted Fate. With his shorter cast range on his yellow cards, you can punish him when he pulls the wrong card or if he goes aggressive. He also likes to sit back and farm, which is something Oriana also likes to do early on. As for champions that synergize well with Orianna, those include Malphite, Jarvan, Yasuo, Rengar, and Alistair. Basically, champions that have hard engage and gap closers can help Orianna initiate by following up with Command Shockwave. This is very effective for removing high priorities on the back line without Orianna having to be back there herself. As for the items you want to consider picking up while playing Orianna, at level 1, you're probably going to want to start off with a Doran's Ring and a couple health pots, and of course, your Warding Totem. As the game continues onward, typically almost every Oriana player will be picking up a Chalice of Harmony and an Athene's Unholy Grail. The reason behind this is it will restore a lot of your maximum mana on a kill or an assist, which is very helpful to continue either casting abilities or protecting your team with your abilities, and they are not cheap to cast. From there, you'll make sure you pick up your Boots of Speed and build those into your Sorcerer's Shoes with the Magic Penetration. Your next item that you'll want to consider will probably depend on your lane matchup and can vary a few different ways. You'd pick up a death cap to help contribute to maximum amounts of damage, or if you're going up against a lane matchup that might be AD and a stasis would be helpful, Azonia's Hourglass can be the next item you would choose. 
If the enemy team is a really harassful team and has a lot of magic damage, an Abyssal Scepter could be picked up here, but probably not the most utilized with the aura. Continuing on from here, assuming that we have our Athenes, our Boots, and a Death Cap, we could pick up the Hourglass next, and we could round out our build with even more damage with a Void Staff and a Ludens Echo. Typically, Morello Namacon isn't built that often on Orianna. It can be, I'm not saying it can't. Its passive is really good, it is a cheaper item to buy, and it still gives you 20% cooldown reduction, but just the return on mana from Athenes makes it a little bit better for Orianna. And finally, to recap, let's talk about her pros and her cons, starting with her pros. Her passive helps her with lane pressure and CSing. She has great utility that can help the whole team. She has great wave clear. She scales very well into the late game, and she can turn teamfights completely around with a great shockwave. As for some cons, keeping track of your ball can be hard in chaotic fights. She's hard on her mana early before finishing core items. She doesn't come with an awesome escape. Missing your ult can have a big negative impact on a fight and can make you feel terrible. She's not the easiest to learn and takes plenty of time to master. And as for my final thoughts, I think Orianna just in general is a fun champion. Like I said, we'll take a little bit of time to fully utilize and understand her kit completely, but she is a good champion. We've seen plenty of competitive play from her over the years. She's never really seen too many major nerfs or major buffs. A few at first when she was first released, just because she, her range on her ball was incredibly great and just the poke damage and zoning control was a little bit too good. It still is strong, but in general, she's just a good champion. The utility that she does bring makes her kind of a support most of the time, and you can get a lot of assists this way, which is not uh, the worst way to do things, but you know, it can be a little aggravating. But it feels nice to be contributing to the team all the time in fights, whether you're shielding, slowing, damaging, flipping people back in, just anything. She does a lot of work, and she's just, in general, a very, very good champion. I highly suggest you check her out, and as always, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments, and I'll see all of you in the next build video.